Well, the sun rising on some of the most spectacular scenery of this 43rd edition, with more tricky navigation in store for the bikers. Toby Price had the arduous task of opening and lost over half an hour. The Aussie was held up in the soft early dunes, just making it over that one. And then having to come back for seconds here. Lucky he's big and strong. Well, Price was also hindered by a rear tank issue in the latter part of the stage and drops from first to 16th overall. It was really, really difficult. I got stuck in the air about five times. So, uh, yeah, a little frustrating, but um, yeah, you just got to try and regroup, get the bike going. Well, it was an even worse day for his KTM teammate, Matthias Wagner. The Austrian's hopes of a second Dakar title all but ended by this early mechanical. Yeah, I think something with the clutch, uh, with the gearbox, because if I put the gear in, the bike is, is not moving, so why is so hot? Well, Wagner losing nearly two and a half hours. Game over, meanwhile, for Andy Short. The American also had mechanical issues and decided that they couldn't be fixed. The Yamaha factory team losing one of their overall contenders. In his own words, leading rookie Daniel Sanders was having some fun today, though a missed note late in the day cost him some time, but he was still ninth on the stage. In ninth overall is Stefan Svitko, one of the Dakar's top privateer bikers. The 2016 runner-up was only 10 minutes or so off the pace. Adrian van Beveren has made a solid start, the birthday boy in sixth overall. The navigation's really tough. But I'm happy I enjoyed myself today. We had sand from the start and June, so I really threw myself into it. I would say that for my 30th birthday today, I, I just went for it and attacked. Well, plenty of riders struggling with the navigation, and that meant a big shakeup in the overall standings. It was a mixed bag for Honda's Nacho Corneja, who went full gas almost all day. The young Chilean was fourth last year, and he was fifth on this second stage. He might have done even better were it not for an early mistake, which cost him around five or six minutes. The locals enjoying a front row seat. Now, Yamaha may have lost Andy Short, but this was a great effort from their other new recruit, Ross Branch. The airline pilot from Botswana is absolutely flying and he's up to third overall. Last year's top two, Pablo Quintanilla and Ricky Brabeck were forced to push after losing time on stage one. Quintanilla had a few issues following the tracks but came third on the stage, Brabeck in second after what was in his opinion a much more straightforward outing than the curtain raiser. But the star performer on the day was Joan Bereda. Bang Bang storming to his 25th Dakar stage win and moving to the top of the overall standings. Well, after a tough day yesterday where we lost quite a bit of time with the various problems we had in the first part of the stage, we had to give it our all. We knew it was going to be dangerous, so we had to be very careful. But I managed to stay calm in some tricky situations, and ultimately, it was a very good stage. Well, pretty sizable gaps once again. 12 minutes and 6 seconds separating the top five on the stage. Parada leaps from 18th to 1st with reigning champion Brabeck now 2nd. Branch, Quintanilla and Xavier de Sultre round out the top five. Pablo Capetti took stage honours in the quads. The Argentinian came 3rd overall in 2017 and he's currently 3rd overall at Dakar 2021. The stage one winner, Alexandre Giroud, still top of the pile, a minute and nine seconds ahead of Giovanni Enrico.